Today we're replacing the RAM inside of our Alienware R11. Yes, that is a pre-built, and yes, it is a Dell slash Alienware. So you're probably wondering to yourself right off the bat, Kevin, is there some kind of weird shroud or cover I have to move to get to the RAM? No. And then you also might be wondering to yourself, and this is actually a pretty valid concern, is there anything I need to do with the software, with the MOBO? Do I need to fire it into a BIOS menu to make sure these even work and are compatible? Or if they are compatible, am I going to be able to engage XMP overclocking and make sure that these are actually running up to their advertised speeds? Yes, indeed. And then all the PC purists out there saying that traitor AK-40 Kevin, he used to build PCs and now he's got himself a pre-built sitting over his shoulder. I don't even think that thing's got a BIOS menu. Shoot, you open it up, it ain't even got a motherboard in it. It's like a console. It's an APU. Uh, take it easy there, bud. We're going to get these RAM sticks installed, jumping from 16 to 32. We're going to test that for about three weeks to a month. Then we're going to make the jump to 64 gigabytes. I'm going to talk about why anyone would want to go from 16 to 32 and then to 64. We're also going to talk about having 128 gigabytes of RAM and who that application is right for. Then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about a huge upcoming project with the Alienware R11. Well, it ain't, ain't going to look like that anymore. In fact, you're, you're not even, unless I tell you, you ain't going to know it's an Alienware. Alrighty, Stallions and Stallionettes, when working on a console or PC, the first thing you want to do is obviously shut it down completely. Don't just yank the power cord from the wall. Don't just hold down the power button on the front. Go to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen and soft shut her down. She deserves it. You take good care of her. She's going to take good care of you during mining, streaming, productivity, or even that late night web browsing that you don't want anybody to know about. Alrighty, friends, so we got the desktop pulled out of here. As you see, I have two distinct bundles of cords or wires back here. These are all my USB connectors, and these are all of my uh, DP and HDMIs for my display. They go into the back of my GPU, my 3080. So I do recommend keeping your wires bundled up like this. It makes it easier when you need to change out a component or anything like that, knowing that they're not all tangled up. You just kind of align them straightly so they're not all tangled up and whatnot. And then also I do have cable trays uh, behind the entire desk that I have added myself to kind of keep everything Everything neat and tucked up off the floor. It's a little bit of a mess right now because I'm reviewing a couple products that I do not know if I'll be keeping in the long run. And then I do also have this cable wrap right here, which will hold all the wires together in basically one, uh, in, in basically one white braid behind the PC, which keeps everything looking nice and clean. So there is a link to these cable wraps as well as these Velcro ties in the description below. I don't recommend using zip ties because you literally have to cut them off each time you need to adjust them. And one false cut, you're cutting into your wires. So taking apart the case on an R10, R11, or R12 is very, very simple. You have this Phillips head screw in the back here, which you are going to remove. Awesome, awesome. Now on these two levers right here, you are going to pull up into the unlock position. You are going to pull out on this lever right here. I don't recommend pulling out, but for this process, you're going to have to. You're going to pull out right here, and it will pop off the side panel. Just like that. And we, get, oh, and we get a look at the guts, or the internals, if you will. We're going to go ahead and swivel out this PSU, or power supply unit. It is on a hinge mechanism and literally just swivels out to the side. But before you do that, before you do that though, what I recommend you do is if you do still have a mechanical hard drive right here on this channel, we remove that in lieu of a second intake fan. So we actually do have 220 millimeter intake fans versus the one that comes on this bad boy, which simply isn't enough cooling, especially for this small compact somewhat semi-small form factor case. But what I would recommend you do if you do still have that mechanical hard drive there uh, is to unplug the power the power and data cables to it because they will actually get bent or pop off uh, as you swivel the PSU. So just make sure you pop those off first and this swivels out like this. Awesome. So while we have this open, this is a very, very good opportunity to clean it out with this. I have spent an absolute fortune over the years with those air duster cans. Now I do strongly recommend this. It does retail for $50, but you, again, you will save a ton of money over the long run. This thing actually puts out more air than one of those air duster cans. It doesn't get all cold to the touch on your hand and it comes with a ton of attachments. So if you're using this for auto detailing, tidying up, dusting around the house or for PCs and keyboards, this thing is awesome for that. had no idea how dirty and dusty it actually was inside here. That is insane. So if you do have two RAM sticks installed, as I do out of the box with this configuration of the R11, they are going to be plugged into slots, uh, DIMM slots two, one and two, which are these uh, white or gray levers here. So in order to get the RAM sticks out, you are going to push on 
the top and bottom lever and you will hear a nice click and that is going to kick out your ram stick and you can pop it out by hand like that. It is Kingston HyperX RAM, which isn't fantastic. It's not absolutely terrible, but it's not great either. And the current clock speed is 2933 on these bad boys. So Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, in my opinion, is the best bang for buck RAM on the market. I've used this in my last built PC. I've used this in two of my friends' PCs that I built with them. Uh, this stuff is fantastic. If you don't need RGB or anything fat, fancy or flashy or crazy, you just need good high performance RAM that not only runs good out of the box, but has a ton of overhead for overclocking, i.e. a lot of pretty good natural cooling with these aluminum fins to where even before you put on any kind of a RAM cooling solution with like a fan that snaps on above the RAM slots and blows cold air onto these bad boys, or not really cold, just moving air, um, just with the actual heat sink that's on these bad boys, you can usually overclock for at least four to 600 megahertz above the standard clock speed. So that's really good. Now these are rated for 3,600 megahertz in their current configuration out of the box. So I probably won't do a whole heck of a lot of overclocking to them. We might try and crank them up to around 3,800 or so, but because this is an Intel, I, because this is an Intel CPU, it's an i7 uh, overclocked to five gigs, water cooled here. It's not an AMD CPU, so AMD CPUs really do like fast RAMs. So on my previous PC, I had a uh, AMD 3600X, uh, and that bad boy really did benefit quite a bit, quite a bit from fast RAM. So with an Intel CPU, it doesn't matter as much to have the fastest RAM on the market. But anyway, since we're using two sticks here, guys, you do want to put them back into dim slot one and two, which are the ones that have these white prongs or pegs. Let me make sure you guys can actually see that in there and you cannot put this ram in the wrong way as you see there is a cutout right there and that will line up with this cutout right there and that, that, that that's the wrong way there we go now we're cooking with that grease give it a nice push on the top and bottom and you will hear a nice satisfying click on the top and the bottom letting you know it is locked into place now after about three weeks to a month i am going to be buying two more of these identical sticks going for 64 gigabytes and talk about the actual real world performance difference in gameplay but most importantly 4k video editing and a lot of other productivity work which is the main reason you would want to go with that high uh, of an amount of ram Awesome. So replacing or installing new RAM really is that simple, guys. You just want to make sure that you are plugged into the right slots because if you are plugged into uh, the other dim slots that have the black tabs, it simply will not boot. But we're going to go into the initial boot. I'm going to show you guys how to launch the BIOS in a uh, Alienware PC as it is a different key command on the keyboard than pretty much any other motherboard I've seen and show you which settings you do need to flip on to make sure that you are able to actually overclock this RAM to its to its recommended speed, in this case, 3600 megahertz. And you might be wondering, hey, Kevin, why didn't you just leave those other two sticks in there? You actually can't do that, mix and match brands like that. Technically, you could mix and match, uh, make and model, but these are a different timing speed. So basically, they, they run at a different megahertz clock speed, and they also have a different timing set as well. So they simply would not work. They're not compatible. You would need to get matching RAM sticks. So I could have technically gotten two more of these, or again, what we're gonna do is two more of the Vengeance LPX RAMs or sticks, I should say. You know, she's still looking good in there. Cable management's still a hot fucking train wreck. So getting the side plate back on is actually quite simple as well. There's a couple of tabs down here and then you have these ones right here that do have arrows indicating uh, that they are to be facing downward. So that is what you're going to do. You're going to line them up just like that. There you go. Cooking with that grease. And you'll hear that nice satisfying click. And that means that this lever has locked into place. You're going to make sure that you do lock down both of these tabs here and then do return that phillips head screw to its home right here as well guys very small mosquito buzzing around my room right now and it sucks literally it's, it's sucking my blood draining me of my fluids not in a good way either all right sweetie pie all right, Stallion, so the first time you boot up with your new RAM installed, whether you change the speed of the RAM or you changed the uh, size of the RAM, or in this case, we did both, you are going to get this message here. This is support assistant, pre-boot system performance check. You get a warning message, big yellow exclamation mark. Don't run for the hills. You don't need to hide. You don't need to burn your PC or anything like that. We're going to get through this together. The amount of system memory has changed. You're goddamn right it has. If you did not change your memory to resolve this issue, try to reseat the memory. So this is good if you didn't change anything and you get this message, you know, hey, one of my RAM sticks is wiggled loose, but we're gonna go to BIOS setup over here. 
and this will pop you up into the BIOS menu. All right, so the BIOS looks a little bit different on an Alienware PC than what you might be used to on like an MSI motherboard or build a PC by component style motherboard. So, all right, good. I just want to confirm this right here. It is showing how much memory you have, which is 32768 megabytes, which would be 32 gigabytes. And the memory speed is, as of now, 3600 megahertz. So we didn't need to do anything. It is already at its default running speed of 30 of 3600 megahertz which is good if you come over here to advanced my god there is like no sensitivity in this mouse right now you can also use the up and down arrows on the keyboard as well but over here in advanced go to performance options and you want to make sure that xmp memory is on or in this case it says xmp1 now by default out of the box it is uh so i have to give De dell or alienware a little bit of praise for having that in initiated so people can overclock their ram using acc or alienware command center which is the built-in software suite that allows you to overclock the cpu gpu and ram uh, so it will actually take effect from the motherboard, which is great. But if you ever want to mess with anything like your power limits, your core voltage, and you want to do some overclocking on the BIOS level, vice using something like MSI Afterburner or ACC, you can actually come in here and mess with some of the core voltage and whatnot. Awesome. So we are going to go to save and exit. All right. So she shut down. She's restarting. And as you can see, it doesn't tell you what key you need to press during this initial boot up in order to launch into the BIOS menu, which is weird. Usually when you launch uh, your PC with any other motherboard, it'll tell you like F2 or F12 to enter the BIOS. It is simply F2, so just spam F2 while you're booting up. So just spam F2 while you're booting up and you're on the splash screen that says Alienware and you will launch into that BIOS menu. So if you're ever having any issues, you probably can remedy it by resetting all the default um, values of everything in there by clicking sure enough, just reset to default and that should fix any issues that you might be having. Alrighty Stallions, over here on the PC, so a couple of ways that we're gonna test to make sure that our RAM is indeed installed correctly and it's registered in our motherboard and also we're getting the speeds that we need. First of all, you're gonna go down to your settings. If you do not have it shortcutted down here to your taskbar, you can literally just click on the Windows icon on the lower left-hand side of the screen or press the Windows key on your keyboard and type in settings and you will pop it up. You will go to system and then you will go down here to about. And right here, you can see installed RAM 32 gigabytes. Fantastic. Well, that's giving us the size, but we don't get anything about our speed or how much of it is actually being utilized. Let's fix that right now. We're going to go ahead and hit control alt delete. It's going to pull up your task manager. You're going to go over here to the performance tab. Now you're going to see your CPU, your central processing unit. You're going to see all of your storage devices. You're even going to see your ethernet, your up and down speeds and whatnot, plus your GPU, your big old juicy 3090 or 3080 or your old 570, whatever you got, your baked potato, whatever you're running. But over here in memory, this is what we're concerned about over here. This is actually going to show you how much of the memory is actually being utilized. Currently 10 gigabytes of my RAM or random access memory is being utilized. Good thing I'm not, I'm not on 16 gigabytes anymore because that would be almost the entirety of my random access memory. Why is it so high right now? Well, I'm screen recording with Streamlabs OBS, plus I, ha plus I have different programs running in the background. It's a lot for it to handle, ladies. 9.9 .9 gigabytes is currently being used, meaning uh, mathematically that 21.8 gigabytes is still uh, usable, but how about the speed, right? That's a, that's a fine question right there. 3600 megahertz so we are indeed at the advertised speed of 3600 megahertz fantastic is there any other ways that we can check the speed you're fucking a right we that, that you can and this will also show you how many slots are being used up are you stuffing all the slots or are you only in two of the possible four holes that you can put yourself in we're only in two of them right now um again we're gonna buy two more identical sticks and eventually get up to 64 gigabytes. Is that overkill? Absolutely. In fact, 32 gigabytes is overkill for most things, gaming included. However, uh, when you get into things like video editing, productivity work, not to mention streaming, especially if you're on a single PC setup like myself, where you have Streamlabs OBS, which by the way is a thicker, heavier, more resource intensive version than just regular OBS studio because it has a bunch of plugins and stuff running in the background. When you start doing things like that that require multitasking, you're going to see, uh, I mean, th 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 there's 10 gigabytes of RAM being utilized right now. So we're going to go over here to ACC or Alienware Command Center. Again, if you do not have this pinned to the taskbar, which I do recommend you do if you have an Alienware PC. Man, if you don't have Alienware Control Center down here on the bottom panel, what you're going to do is go ahead and hit your Windows key over here and you're going to type in ACC or Alienware Command Center or you're just going to see the logo right there. You're going to click on it. 
then you're gonna come over here to the fusion tab now mine's a little bit sleepy right now it hasn't had a chance to wake up today and i'm not gonna you know arise it from its slumber or anything like that but when you do pop open the fusion tab you're gonna have your cpu your gpu and your ram over here and your ram it's gonna show you the two different slots you have and it is gonna show you what your actual clock speed is for your ram now you can select it but it will not apply the overclock until you actually reset your pc it will pop up with a little box telling you hey you need to reset for these overclock settings to become in effect and then you are good to go so overall pretty simple to install ram on the alienware aurora line whether it's an r9 10 11 or 12 um, I don't know why people make a huge deal out of working on the Alienware. I mean, yeah, it is a rather small form factor case. And yes, it is a pre-built, but it's really not any different than working on an actual custom PC. It's, still, it's got a motherboard. It's got RAM. It's got a power supply unit. It's got a CPU, a CPU cooler, and it's got a graphics card. It, it's, it's, it's a PC. I don't know what the big deal is. I genuinely hope that this tutorial was beneficial for you guys. If you are looking to install some additional RAM or replace the RAM that you have in your Alienware Aurora PC, if it was beneficial for you guys, please like the video. That does help it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow this channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. We cover a whole Holy shit ton shit. of... We cover a whole shit ton of awesome content here at Gamer Heaven, everything from news in the gaming community and industry, as well as live streams, gameplay, and tutorials just like this. And I'll see you tomorrow because I upload or go live daily. And if you want to catch me live to ask me questions, I do go live on this channel as well as Facebook Gaming and Twitch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Central. I'll see you guys there. Peace. If you actually watched the video to this point, thank you for one and two. I almost forgot. I'm adding this little clip it, the snippet, if you will. But I mentioned during the intro, I was going to be doing a little something, something to my Alienware Aurora R11. I'm case swapping every single component in there. Every single, the fan, the water cooler, the motherboard, the RAM, the PSU, which I know is on that weird swivel mechanism and everything. We're going to be putting it in a nice little Mui Caliente case. Well, not Mui Caliente. It's not going to, that's the reason we're case swapping is so it gets better cooling and it looks better. And I don't have to keep answering uh, why I bought a pre-built like 6,000 times a day.